Hi, and thanks for tuning into my channel, Oncology for Medical Students. This is a part of a series on oncological emergencies, with this video focusing on neutropenic sepsis. Neutropenic sepsis is a life-threatening complication of cancer treatment, usually chemotherapy, which describes an infection in someone whose immune system isn't functioning properly due to the side effects of the treatment. It's thought that there are two main mechanisms whereby chemotherapy can cause neutropenic sepsis. The first is suppression of bone marrow. The bone marrow is contained in large bones in the body, like the femur here. In the bone marrow, there are stem cells that are able to produce different types of blood cells. These include white blood cells, known as leukocytes, whose job it is to fight infection. White blood cells tend to have a short life cycle, and therefore a person's level of immunity from infection depends on these cells being constantly replaced at the correct rate. One type of white blood cell, which happens to be the most abundant, is the neutrophil. Neutrophils are particularly important in fighting bacterial infection. Chemotherapy is a cytotoxic treatment. This means it basically kills cells. Most chemotherapies work by interfering with cell division and therefore have their most significant effects on tissues where cells are dividing rapidly. Cancerous cells in malignant tumours are normally dividing rapidly, so chemotherapy will kill these cells. But unfortunately, there are lots of other cells in the body that rapidly divide that are not cancerous and are important to the function of the body. This includes stem cells in the bone marrow. When patients are having chemotherapy, therefore, they're not able to produce many new blood cells, including white blood cells, and most importantly in the context of this video, neutrophils. A low level of neutrophils circulating in the blood is known as neutropenia. Another important area of the body where cells divide rapidly is the lining of the gastrointestinal tract, known as the mucosa. These cells are under constant physical stress as a result of contact with food and digestive products and need to divide constantly to maintain their protective lining. In the GI tract, there are a huge number of bacteria. These are mostly considered to be flora, which means that they don't usually cause infections and are actually important to aid digestion. They normally live just within the gut and aren't able to enter the bloodstream and infect the body due to the protective function of the mucosa. Chemotherapy often prevents the gut mucosa from dividing at a fast enough rate to maintain its protective structure and its protective function. Bacteria that are not normally able to cross the gut mucosa and enter the bloodstream might be able to get in and cause infections. It's actually thought that gut flora is the most common source of neutropenic sepsis bacteria and in around 80% of the cases thought to be the cause of neutropenic sepsis. The combination of bacteria entering the blood via a compromised gut mucosa and a low number of neutrophils that can't fight off the bacterial infections adequately are considered to be the main causes of neutropenic sepsis. Although it's presumed that most cases of neutropenic sepsis are caused by bacteria, it's important to realise that a source is only actually found in around 20-30% of cases and a positive blood culture is often the only confirmation of an infection. Other common sources of infection might include chest or urine. One very important source to consider in patients that are receiving chemotherapy are long-term central venous access devices that are used to deliver chemotherapy, such as PIC or Hickman lines. These lines are often the source of bacterial colonisation and are a potential source for bacteria to enter the bloodstream. In the past, the most commonly identified organisms were gram-negative bacterial infections, such as Pseudomonas. But now, more commonly, we see gram-positive bacteria causing infections. It's thought that this might be used to the more extensive use of long lines, such as PIC or Hickman lines, which are often colonised by gram-positive bacteria, or the extent of use of antibiotics in the past that targeted gram-negative bacteria. It's important to realise that because these patients have a suppressed immune system, they might not mount the kind of immune response that we might expect in a patient who doesn't have a compromised immune system. Often, the only sign of infection in patients who have neutropenic sepsis is a fever, so we have to have a very, very low threshold for suspecting neutropenic sepsis. This is reflected in the definition of neutropenic sepsis, which is, unsurprisingly, very broad. As we can see on the right, the definition of neutropenic sepsis is a patient on chemotherapy whose neutrophil count is less than 0.5 plus either a temperature of over 38 degrees Celsius, 
or any signs or symptoms suggestive of sepsis or infection. Up to 60% of patients with a neutrophil count of less than 0.5 and a temperature of over 38 turn out to have an infection. And up to 20% of patients with a neutrophil count of less than 0.1 have a bacteremia, which means bacteria in the bloodstream. So you can see how important it is to try and identify these patients very quickly and treat them quickly. In terms of management, neutropenic sepsis is really an emergency. Things can escalate very quickly in compromised patients and levels of morbidity and mortality in these patients is very high. Any patient on chemotherapy who either has a fever or any suspicion of infection should have antibiotics immediately after blood cultures are taken. Patients should receive broad spectrum antibiotics that cover both gram positive and gram negative bacteria as soon as possible and certainly no later than one hour after they present to the hospital as evidence shows that delays in giving antibiotics lead to worse outcomes. You might notice that in most cases this will mean giving antibiotics before the laboratory neutrophil count has time to come back. So technically you can't really diagnose these patients with neutropenic sepsis on initial presentation but because the stakes are so high we have to treat them empirically with broad spectrum antibiotics to prevent them from becoming seriously unwell. If when the blood test results come back and they're not neutropenic, then obviously treatment can be tailored accordingly. But if we wait for the neutrophil count to come back and it turns out they're neutropenic and we have delayed antibiotics, this could have serious consequences. Once the first dose is given, then a full medical history, examination and appropriate investigations can be arranged. This might involve blood tests and appropriate samples for culture, for example urine or sputum as well as imaging, such as a chest x-ray, for instance. If a patient has a central venous access device like a PIC or a Hickman line, cultures should then be taken from this too. In patients who aren't neutropenic and have sepsis, if there's a clear source of infection, often antibiotics are initially chosen to target that infection. This isn't the case in neutropenic sepsis, Often the source isn't that obvious, and also having a compromised immune system means they're vulnerable to a number of different infections in different sources, so it's important to give empirical antibiotics from the start. Typically, most cases of neutropenic sepsis are caused by bacterial infections, but in severely immunocompromised patients with neutropenia over a long period of time, they can be susceptible to fungal and viral infections. Most bacterial infections will respond to antibiotics in the first two to seven days. But if patients are having ongoing fevers past this, it's important to consider fungal infections. Many of these patients will go on to have CT imaging of the chest to look to see whether there's any evidence of fungal infection in the lungs. So, in summary, neutropenic sepsis is a life-threatening complication of cancer treatment. Patients on chemotherapy are thought to be susceptible to infections as a result of suppression of the bone marrow, leading to suppression of the immune system, as well as breakdown of the gastric mucosa. It's defined as a neutrophil count of less than 0.5 in patients with either a temperature of over 38 degrees or signs and symptoms consistent with sepsis or infection. It's absolutely vital that these patients get antibiotics within the first hour to prevent serious complications from arising. Thanks for listening. As usual, your comments and questions are welcome. And if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, please click like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.